Hello, I'm JW. Uh, today we've got this thing here to have a look at. Now this is a uh, street lighting cutout, and this thing is normally used in the bottom of uh, lighting columns or lamp posts, and it has two functions, one of which is to enable the actual thing to be disconnected from the supply, and the other one it does contain a fuse as well. So let's open it up and have a look inside. So here's the thing. Uh, this one hasn't actually been used, it's a brand new one, it's a fairly older one. It has the uh, Bill uh, branding on that one. Uh, Bill was taken over by Eaton quite some time ago, along with several other brands as well. But uh, this is fairly typical of these uh, in general. And uh, what we've got here is the uh, cables actually come in the bottom here, this is actually for the supply. So uh, basically a cable would come in uh, into the bottom of the lighting column. And it's got two of these because it's normally the case that you would have the wires or the supply coming in, and then it would actually go out again and loop along the street to the next one, and so on, all the way down the road. So, uh, of course, two of these is fairly common. Uh, there are various types of fittings you can get for these. This one has this brass insert, which is actually for armoured cable. I'll uh, have a look at that uh, in a moment. And this particular one is also a double pole version, as we can see on the label here. So we've got L1 and L2. So you can actually have two different cables coming out at the top there for either, say, two lights or a light and some other piece of equipment or whatever you wanted. Now it's a fairly uh, slim line item obviously to fit in the bottom of the column, so it tends to be sort of taller rather than uh, actually fairly wide. Two holes at the top here, that's where the cables would come out and then go at the column to the light or whatever on the top. And the uh, screws on the front here, this is for the bottom piece which would only open when you're actually wiring the thing in initially, and then the top piece here is what would be removed to access the fuses and also to disconnect the supply to the thing at the top. So just a single screw in the centre there, and then this whole front piece will just pull out with a certain amount of force, and we can see what we have inside. Now this is intended to be removed with the power connected, and as we've got this little label here, the only actual live part is actually inside here, so even when this is taken out, so it's quite a safe thing because you actually have to ram something in there to uh, actually get a shock from it. So uh, reasonably uh, well designed there. And then the terminals here are what goes to the cables at the top to the light fitting or whatever it is you have. Now we'll take the bottom off of this as well. As a normal uh, use you would only remove this when it was being installed with power obviously not connected yet. Let's say we'll have a look in this anyway. So this is just a plastic cover, just two screws to secure, and they actually go straight into the plastic. But again, this is not something that's intended to be opened particularly often, pretty much a once-only deal. And then this plate here is for the armoured cable, and this can actually be removed, and you can get a different type of plate which fits in for, say, different types of cable termination. This is solid brass, and say two of those, and of course on the back we've got the terminals here for the earth connections as well. Here's a look inside the actual main body, and the incoming cables would actually go onto these three terminals at the bottom here, so it's line, neutral, and earth. Both line and neutral are disconnected when you remove the lid. As you can see here, there's a clear break between the incoming and the terminals at the top. And of course the earth remains connected all the time, so obviously that just goes straight through. And because we've got two cables coming in the bottom here, and they could be of a certain size, you can see here we've actually got two holes on each of the terminals, so one for each of the cables. So one is the screw on the top here, and then the bottom ones, of course, are the screws there on the back. So it is just uh, one wire into one hole, there's no need to sort of double up on it or anything, and uh, it's obviously a reasonably good design. And uh, this piece here for the armoured cable, unlike using the uh, proper glands or whatever, these are actually supplied with two of these, and the deal here is you put the actual wires or the bedding through the centre, and then the armoured strands just come up over the outside of this brass piece and is secured in place with this clip here, it's just one of these you just tighten down on the end here and it just uh, reduces the diameter, so it just clamps on the wire strands to the outside and of course the wires go through the centre. Now that arrangement might seem a bit crappy but uh, that's how they are actually supplied and how they're intended to be used. And in terms of this, you'll see it's got quite a thick uh, section of brass there, so uh, even if you tighten this down to a huge extent, it's not actually going to uh, damage that at all. But, uh, nevertheless, it provides a uh, good solid connection, so solid brass, and then of course you've got your 
terminals on the back here to enable a collection to the actual earthed part there. So, so that's the uh, plate for arm and cable, probably the more common variety, but you can get others which just have, say, round holes for uh, other types of gland and whatever else. Now, so this is the double pole version, so uh, we've actually got two connections here with two separate uh, lines going out. And you can get a single pole version as well, which is basically just the uh, one connection there. See these cutouts here at the top where the outgoing cables would go, so just come down the column basically from above, loop through here and then just connect into the terminals there as required. Now the terminals are actually marked in the top here, sort of engraved into the plastic there, so it might be easy to see what we've got. Basically L1 here, it's also repeated with L1 at the top there, so that's this uh, terminal here. L2 is this one here at the top there. Neutrals are this one, so it's just a common neutral for both of the outputs. And then the earth stays over here, just permanently connected through. And of course there is a spacer there, a piece of uh, plastic between the two, so of course it's uh, line and neutral are obviously separate. And also note that this line here is actually separate from this one as well, and this allows you to have a separate fuse for the two outgoing circuits. This is the uh, top piece. And this is what basically goes into the uh, bottom there and bridges between the incoming terminals and the outgoing ones. Now we've got uh, the line one at the bottom here, and I say it's just a basic piece of metal going across, and this prong goes into the line terminal here, just a bit down uh, inside there. And because this is the double pole version, we've actually got two connections here. So the first one is here, we'll go across to that one, and then the second one is here and goes across there, and that's actually where the fuses would go. The neutral is provided by this piece in the middle, it's basically just a solid link. So uh, this piece here goes into the incoming neutral, and then this one up here just goes into the slot there for the outgoing neutral, so just a solid link. But importantly, when this is removed, the neutral is completely disconnected from the supply, and so the earth goes straight through. Now when you buy these they don't come with fuses so you have to get those separately and the fuses go on these screw terminals and see it's got a nice uh, recess there for the screwdriver to go in. So it's just a question of loosening the screws here. And the fuses are these style which are LST fuses, uh, there may be other names from other manufacturers and various ratings are available. This one is a uh, 20 amp there, we can perhaps see that on the top of the fuse, and you've got these two holes here, one at a right angle to the other, and to install the fuse it's just a case of uh, loosening the two screws here. This will then just slot over behind that one, and then of course the other side will just uh, slot down over the top of that, and then just a question of tightening up those screws to fix it in position. And so because this is the double pole we can also put another fuse for the other outgoing connection. So again, just the same, just loosen those. And here's another fuse, this uh, particular one is a uh, different rating. That's actually a uh, 6 amp version, but again they're all the same physical dimension, so you can fit in whatever you want, as depending on the particular application. So uh, as before, it just say uh, hooks over that, and uh, this end will just uh, slot over at the end there. And again, just tighten up those screws to fix it in position. So that's it in its uh, assembled condition, and then it's just a question of uh, plugging in to the base. And you can see now that the line comes in here, goes through the fuses there, and then you've got two separate prongs here, note the plastic between the two, so these are not connected at the top, which of course go into the uh, corresponding terminals here for L1 and L2 over there. And so that just plugs in the front uh, like that. And so the fuses come in various ratings, so we've got a 6 and a 20 in there, I've got a, a 32 here, just about to see that on there, and I think that actually is all uh, 32s as well. So again you just select the uh, fuse depending of course on what was actually connected to the other side of that. So street lighting uh, cut out there, and of course designed specifically for that purpose, although there's no reason why you couldn't use it for something else if you had a requirement for a couple of fuses at a moderately low rating, so they up to sort of 30 amps or so. And so you can still buy those in various forms, that's an older one, but of course 
plenty of new ones are available. Those ones are sold under the Eaton brand now. Uh, obviously, other manufacturers are available. So that's it for this time. So until next time, thanks for watching.